Welcome back chemist. In this video I'm going to go through how to calculate the pH of an acidic salt called ammonium chloride. I have four other videos you can watch on how to calculate the pH of other acids and bases. So in this video we are going to use the pH equals negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration that you've hopefully seen before. We're also going to use a new one that for a conjugate acid base pair if you multiply their dissociation constants by each other, the acid and the base, you will get the Kw for water. So the other one you're going to write down, so write that one down, is that to find the Ka, since this is going to act as an acidic salt, we will need to take the Kw and divide it by the Kb for um, ammonium, and then we'll find the Kb for ammonia, because that's going to be the base. Okay. Next is if you are at 25 degrees, the Kw is 1 to the negative 14th, and then Kb and Ka, when you multiply them by each other, will equal 1 to the negative 14th. So there we go. So those are all the equations you're going to need. Um, I'm going to keep this little acid-base partnership up here for just a little bit. You're going to see that again. Next, I'm going to show you what does it mean to be an acidic salt. So the first thing I want you to see is that when ammonium chloride dissolves, what it means is that it dissociates into ammonium ions and chloride ions like that, okay? Here I have a little model of it. So this is the ammonium ion, this is the chloride ion, and when it dissociates, the chloride ion comes off, it's negative, and the ammonium ion is positive, and they end up being what's called dissociated, okay? After that, either one of these ions could change the pH of water. However, you need to know that there's a list of neutral ions, chlorides on that list, that will not alter P the water molecules. So here are some water molecules. And the list I'm going to give you are molecules that do not do anything to the water molecule in terms of protonating it or deprotonating it. Okay, so chloride's one of them. Nitrate's another. I would write these down. These are called neutral ions. You've got iodide ions sulfate ions, perchlorate ions, and bromide ions. Now, if you look at that list, let me lay them back out for you. They are all from strong acids. So if you add a hydrogen ion back to these, they all make a strong acid. So that's how you memorize which ones are which, okay? Next, what is this ammonium going to do when it comes in contact with a water molecule? Okay, so here's my ammonium ion. Here are my water molecules. Here's the reaction that happens. It's actually called a ionization reaction. So this ammonium ion, I'm going to grab two, and these water molecules, what happens is a proton will be given to the water molecule, like that. It'll turn into hydronium, and then this will turn into ammonia. Again, there's my acid base, or should I say base acid partnership, okay? So here's my ammonium, here's my water. It goes into equilibrium, produces ammonia and hydronium. This is then what makes it be an acid. So there you go. That's what makes something an acidic salt. Remember again, there's a list of ions that the ammonium could be bonded to at the very get-go that do not change the pH. Okay, so it's only the ammonium ion turning into ammonia and hydronium. Okay, off to the math we go. All right, so here's the math problem. What's the pH of a 2.5 molar ammonium chloride solution? Here we go. Get your calculator, get something to write with, off we go. So the first thing we're going to want to do is show that, again, ammonium chloride, when it dissolves in water, will dissociate into ammonium ions and chloride ions. Okay, that's called the dissociation reaction. Then the ammonium ions only are going to protonate water they're going to take one of these hydrogens and they're going to put it on that water molecule and protonate it to make it into hydronium plus charge on both sides total. So you have ammonia and ammonium, okay? Next thing is we're going to write this in what's called a rice table. So it's in equilibrium because it's still going to be considered a weak acid. So we're going to take and put our initial concentration, which is 2.5, don't worry about the concentration of water and say there's none of these yet. Then some amount of these ammonium ions are going to turn into ammonia and hydronium. I know, chemistry's got a lot of words, doesn't it? Then you're going to take 2.5 minus that X and X. So then because it's an acting as an acid, okay, it's acting as a proton donor, you do not know the Ka for ammonium, so you have to take the Kw 
divided by the Kb. So the Kw of water at 25 degrees is 10 to the negative 14th. These are these equations I told you to write down at the beginning. And then the Kb for ammonia, this one, is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. I even used that in a separate video if you watch that one. So this equals 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. So let me show you how I got that. So you're gonna take, um, turn the calculator on, good job. You're gonna take one to the negative 14, I just, I just like to the equals, I've said that a lot in these videos, then divide by 1.8 and then to the negative five. Now I get 5.555, but I'm just gonna keep it to two sig figs because that's got two significant figures, okay? Next step is to say, okay, that equals the concentration of ammonia that's formed, hydronium that's formed, multiplied together, products over ammonium ions on the bottom in the denominator, just like we do with any other equilibrium, okay? That's gonna equal x times x divided by 2.5 minus x. Okay, so then the goal here is can we ignore that x? So again, in some other videos I've shown you this, but let's just go through it one more time. You can take 400 times the k value, and as long as it's less than the initial concentration, you are good to go to a neglect x. So 400 times, now we're gonna use this one, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. As long as that is less than 2.5, we can neglect x. I'm not even gonna get my calculator and do this. We can see that this is an absolute yes. So that means we can neglect x right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is simplify this down. So that means that, um, paper's kinda of crooked, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10 equals x squared divided by 2.5 only. He makes the math a little bit easier. I'm gonna multiply, kind of move things around here. So I'll even go this way and keep the X on the other side. That's okay, don't worry about it, don't fret, it's fine. There we go. And then we have to take the square root of that. So that means it's the square root of 2.5 and then 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. I try to get my students to show all the work, you know, then grab the calculator so that you can get all the points you can get. So. Let's do this, so 2.5 times uh, 5.6 to the EE negative 10. Make sure I got that right. Looks good. So then I get 1.4 to the negative nine. And then I'm just gonna take the square root of that right away. So I'm just gonna hit, um, where is it? There it is, second square root. Go grab that number, hit enter. And so I get 3.7. I'm just gonna do the sig figs right away just to save some time here and then negative five. And then don't forget that this is a molarity because we solve for in a concentration that went over. So this is the concentration of ammonia <laughs> and it's the concentration of hydronium. Okay, what in the world are we gonna do next? I think you might know. So we, it's time to go back to pH equals negative log. All right, this isn't the worst now, now that you see it. So then we're gonna take the um, negative log of this concentration, 10 to the negative five. And you can put molarity in there if you want. So then what's it gonna be? So I think I still have it in my calculator. So here, let me show you. So we're gonna take and do um, negative log and then go grab that number up there. That's why I like this calculator for these more calc you know, difficult calculations. And we get 4.42. So remember when I called this an acidic salt? Four, Actually, let's do the sig figs too, four, two, six, nine. So first off, it does act as an acid. Could look at, look at its pH at 25 degrees. Remember, we're at 25 degrees Celsius to use um, this formula back up here. This is definitely an acid, okay? And it's a weak acid in this case. So we know that this equation is correct and that hydroniums are, of course, being formed. Now, sig figs, okay? So maybe if you didn't catch the other videos here, the sig fig rules with pH, number of sig figs in the concentration, two, is the number of decimal places in the pH or pOH. So that means I can only keep two. So that means my final answer is 4.43 as a final answer. Then I'd box it out. I always tell you, make your teachers happy, make them smile. Simple way to make them smile is boxing out answers, okay? So I have another problem for you to do. So let me show you what it is. It's a little harder because it involves calculating molarity then calculating pH. So I'll give you a huge hint. So here's the problem for you to do. 
So pause the video, write it down, do it, and I'll show you the answer. So here's the answer to the problem that I had you try. What made it a little bit harder is I gave you a mass and you had to convert it to a molarity using a volume. I've added in that dissociation mole ra ratio that sometimes can be not one to one, so be careful, converted to liters. Then I did the same thing I did last time, just with a different initial molarity. I didn't change to be a different um, acidic salt, kept that the same. The only thing that was different in the end was it's a little higher pH, probably because you have a lower concentration. So next video is the pH of basic salts. So tune in, come back, watch that one. Go forth, chemists, calculate some pHs on your own. Good luck.